Hi and uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, welcome to Introduction to Git uh, Part 3. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, some features that are not necessarily to be used by Git but are uh, quite handy when you're trying to analyze, uh, uh, analyze some changes that have been introduced into your code if you want to um, get to know who made which changes um, if you want to trace down a bug or uh, a certain commit uh, for which you want to know um, a certain change has, has been introduced. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to, to talk about today is uh, Git Rebase. We're going to take a look at what Rebase is doing. We're also going to take a look at what Interactive Rebase is doing. And we're going to see these things in, in action too. Um, afterwards, we're going to uh, take a look at git grep, git blame, git log with the dash l option and git bisect. And after we have uh, went through the code with these options, we're going, we're going to take a look at how we can uh, automate things or prevent um, certain things from happening automatically. Um, with git hooks and in the end we're going to take a look at what uh, what a git config could possibly look like your global git config and in the very end we're going to take a look at how a possible workflow in a um, in a software project could look like when using git with github for example okay so i think oh you already old dates okay but I think we all remember what we did yesterday and the day before. Okay, um, so let's start with a very lightweight um, topic, um, git tags. Yesterday we have uh, talked about um, branches uh, mainly, and I mentioned that branches are basically just a, a, another reference that you're introducing, that you can work with, and that you can um, continue working on so that you get a different strain of uh, commits, basically a different version of your project and a different history. Um, Git tags work very similar in 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 the sense that they are introducing another reference, but they are not doing all of the additional things that branches are doing. So a Git tag is just uh, basically a named reference to a commit hash, so that you don't have to remember that six, eight, 10 characters or something, you're just going to remember, for example, a version um, name, for example, 1.0 or whatever. Um, with git show, with that name, you can then, uh, as we already did so far, um, take a look at that uh, particular commit uh, and inspect, uh, inspect all the changes that have been introduced there. Um, with git tag dash a, you can even annotate that. That is very useful if you are, for example, tagging a new release of your software in, and you want to um, list all of the new changes that have been introduced. Uh, these tags need to be pushed separately. Um, this is just so that, that you know and that you uh, don't get confused by why your tags are not being pushed while you're doing a git push. Um, you need to give git push the dash dash tags um, option or the tag name that you want to push in order to specifically push these uh, new references that you introduce. Let's take a quick look at uh, how that would look like. Um, I have uh, taken our um, new feature branch that we have worked on yesterday and I have already introduced um, three new commits. Um, so I introduced the new line for, for the new feature. I am calling the new feature now in the main routine and I'm printing the app name. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm following a new line after the printing the app name. Um, so for example, we could, um, could be that calling that new feature in our main routine is something which we think, um, should be released so we could tag this thing with a uh, version 
number and give some description um, about what happened in that new release. So let's do that. Um, we're going to give it the version 1.0, for example, with the dash A option, and it's the commit before our current head. Then we can then write the uh, tag message. So we're going to say that we have added new feature, um, etc. Just then, like a commit message, we can write and quit out of that. And we can now take a look at the git log. And as you can see, um, we have a new reference for that very commit, and that reference is version 1.0. Okay. Uh, maybe let's take a look at that as well. In order to list all of the tags, you can give it the dash L option. And currently, we only have uh, one tag in there, so we only have that one version here. And as I said, you can then just simply git show version 1.0 and it will give you um, the list um, that I've added. So we then know all of the changes. We can look, take a look at all of the changes that have been introduced in version 1.0 as well as the particular commit that we've tagged. Okay, uh, now let's take a look at rebasing. Um, rebasing. Uh, means that we are reapplying commits on top of branches. Uh, so what does that mean? In the first um, uh, stream, we have talked about editing commits, and I briefly mentioned that you can even rewrite commit history. That you can do with, um, with rebasing. And there are um, two different versions of rebasing. Um, the first gives you the possibility to take Couple, a uh, couple commits, uh, some commits, and push them on top of uh, the of another branch. And the interactive version lets you interactively rearrange the commits, um, edit commits, drop commits, edit commit messages, and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> uh, the advantages of um, rebasing in the first version that I mentioned um, is that it gives you a linear history. So instead of doing a merge, where you merge um, two branches together and it, that results in a merge commit, if it's not a fast forward merge, that to say, um, you will always have these graphs in your Git log. Um, and some, some teams uh, might want to have a linear history because for others who are not um, involved in the project, it might be it is definitely made more easier to read a linear history rather than having to retrace all of the merges that are happening. Um, and so having to understand um, what work has been done simultaneously rather than just looking at a linear history and looking at things um, one after another. And merge commits also um, make using git bisect a bit harder, and we're going to see um, git bisect in, in action. A bit later. Um, so let's take a look at um, Git rebasing in action. So as I said, I have already um, introduced three new commits um, on on our new feature branch. So I'm still working on that new feature branch. And let's actually take a look at this a bit um, a shorter output. Um, so our main currently is at um, the merge commit that we have introduced yesterday, and our new feature branch went ahead um, and has added three new commits. So I could um, just simply merge new feature into main. It would be a fast forward commit and we were fine. But it could be that um, implementing your new feature took some time and someone else had to fix an error on main which would mean that it you would uh, that merging your feature into main would result in a merge conflict. Um, but there is a way how to fix that, how to bypass that. So we're going to switch back to main now, and we're going to introduce a change into our um, 
into our dummy CPP. Um, let me take a look. What could we do here? Um, yeah, maybe fix that coding standard issue here. And we're going to git add that and git commit. Fixed another important issue. Oops. And take a look at our log. And now we can see that um, those branches have actually really diverged. So um, what you can do then before you are, if you, if you are aware that your master branch or your main branch has went the head from uh, the commit where you have branched off, you can then um, oops, um, just rebase all of the commits that you have introduced in your feature branch and just move them forward that amount commit the amount of commits that have been introduced on uh, main and how do we do that we just um, switch to the um, to the branch that uh, we want to reapply onto uh, onto main and we're going to call git rebase main and that can result in a merge conflict obviously I wanted to prevent that actually, but uh, apparently I have introduced some changes that led to a merge conflict. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah, Git thinks that that is a merge conflict, but I guess that's quite easy to fix. So that should be the final version that we wanted to have, or what we want it to be like, so we can quit. And take a look at the status, git add dummy. And git commit. And <clears throat> since we are rebasing, um, git is actively applying all of the new changes that we are in, uh, all of the commits onto that um, one commit that we have introduced on the main, which just uh, led us led to that merge conflict that we had. So um, Git knows that there is a commit that it wanted to apply, but that commit led to the merge, uh, to the merge conflict. So it gives me um, that message that I had for the, the commit. So I can simply um, uh, write and quit and tell re Git rebase to continue. And Git rebase now uh, told me that it has successfully rebased and updated the reference of my um, new feature branch. So what happened? Um, let's take a look at the log. We can see that instead of um, having these two um, branches that both have diverged from uh, our, our merge, merge commit that we have done yesterday, all of the uh, <clears throat> all of the commits that I have had introduced on new feature are now on top of um, the commit that I fixed. Because of that merge conflict, um, Git has st still um, left the other branch uh, as it is, um, since the changes there are different because I actually changed the commit when resolving that uh, conflict. Uh, that's a bit, bit bad for my, for my example here. Um, but the main takeaway here is um, <clears throat> you have the possibility to take the commits on your new branch, put them uh, on, and simply uh, introduce what the other history has introduced into your history so that you then can go back to main. Oops, git switch main and git merge the new feature. And since we have already had introduced all of the changes that have happened in main in our branch, we are sort of already completely up to date because we have just updated our history with the other history and that's definitely going to result in a fast forward. And let's take another look at the, um, <coughs> at the log. 
other than those two commits that are still lying around there because git is not going to um to drop them since they're in correct, very correct um, view are introducing some other changes that our main and new feature have introduced. But other than that, we see that there is not, um, we don't have a merge uh, commit like we had yesterday, but all of the commits that I have had, intru that I had introduced um, simultaneously or in, in parallel on two different branches are now in a complete linear uh, fashion here in our log. <clears throat> but there are some other um, things that you can do with rebasing, but it's basically the same command, but it, you can use it in a very different way. And that is with interactive rebasing. Um, interactive rebasing basically lets you rewrite history. Um, and what, do you, what, is, what are, are you actually able to rewrite? Um, all of the things that I've listed here. You can change commit messages, not just of the one that you just had committed, like we have already done with git commit amend, but you can take past commits, um, like the one before your last one, um, or whatever, and edit the commit messages there. You can pull out certain um, files from these commits. Um, you can reorder these commits, or you can even take uh, some commits and squash them together. Oops. Uh, let's see that in action. Um, we do have two commits here, which are both uh, introducing a new line. Printing the app name should also print a new line and new feature needs more new lines. Um, so what we can do here is we can call git rebase with the dash i option. That means that we want to interactively rebase and we need to tell uh, git rebase uh, how many commits um, we want to uh, introduce in the interactively in the interactive rebase. And we do that by passing it a commit. So let's give it head minus four. And this will open up your editor uh, and basically a help menu with what you are able to do with git rebase. And as you can see, um, it starts um, by picking all of the commits. That means that this commit should be in the end after we're done with rebasing. That commit should be um, should be picked as is as it is here. Um, the commands or the help it just says use commit. Um, if you are to replace that with reword, um, as you can see here with the command. But with an E, for example, you could just um, edit the command and how is that going to work? Rebase is going to apply, reapply all of the commits, but it's going to stop and just let you restore some of the files, meaning excluding them from the commit and so on and so forth. And um, uh, after a, a breakup for all of these commands, you can, we have um, that little help message here, which tells us um, that these lines can be reordered and they are executed from top to bottom. And if you remember, we have rebased onto main, which means that fixing that important issue is actually like the commit that, is, that happened first. Um, after that commit, we have added the new lines called the new feature in our main routine and printed the app name with a new line. So what we could do is we could just move that one commit before the call new feature in main routine, because it could be a reason that we want to have commits together, which do sort of the same thing. Uh, or maybe we want that version one thing that we had to be our very last commit. So if we write and quit out of that, um, rebase has now reapplied the very fast first commit. And since I said it should, it should let me reword second commit, it has opened the commit message editor from here for me. So let's fix that typo because there's actually no, uh, there's only one new line in there. So I can save and quit. And now um, 
Git has successfully rebased and updated my refs main. Uh, why did it do that? Let's take a look at the log. Um, okay, the log does actually list the commit name, uh, the commit date. Okay, um, so let's take a look at what the log is saying here. Um, as you can see here, um, the date for our very last commit is um, today at 18.13. Then we have something at 11.02. Then we have another thing at 11.02 and something at 18.12, um, which tells us that that's in, in the time wise, that's not really chronological anymore because we have reordered some commits and that date um, is actually author date. So if you um, uh, remember what I've mentioned in, the, in, in our first stream, we differentiate between the committer and the author. And since you can actually commit these changes at a certain time, and you are then the committer, um, you, can, you can also author, um, which needs a separate date, which means that we have an author date and a committer date too. And these, are, these can differ. Let me see whether we can. Oh, I've scrambled with. With that, there's a foo bar in there. Yeah, we're going to remove that late, a bit later. Um, uh, I've listed uh, it here in, in, in my special log. So that's another version of logs that I'm using. And as you can see, we have the offer date here, which is um, 1813. That was when I have actually um, written the commit. So that's when I wrote the changes, but I committed them two minutes ago at 18.21. Because re rebase reapplied the commits, and that means that it had updated um, the commit date as well. So if you want to know when something actually happened, when these changes have actually been written, you need to take a look at the author date. And if you want to know when, when they have been committed, um, you need to take a look at the committer date. That's just another thing to um, be aware of when doing rebases. Okay. Uh, the second topic um, for this stream is going to be all about um, analysis tools. Um, so we have already used uh, the log in different ways um, uh, and with different formats, but there are just a plethora of other things that you can use Git uh, in, in, in order to analyze changes in your code. Um, maybe because you want to find a specific commit, which has introduced a bug, for example, or a certain feature that you want to uh, know more about. Um, you can, but you can also use Git for finding specific parts of your code. Like if you want to know um, where, the, where the word comment, for example, or where a standard C out has been used in your code, you can use Git for that as well. And you can use the Git log with the dash L option to filter uh, out changes or to filter out all of the commits which introduce changes at a certain uh, line range that you can pass. So let's go through them. Um, git grab fun uh, functions um, basically just like your standard uh, grab in your terminal, um, which is looking for a search word that you give it. Um, you can actually use uh, regular expressions like we had in the git ignore there too. So that you can, for example, um, filter out all of the lines which start with a void, for example, or all you can filter all lines that uh, end with a return zero semicolon, for example. Um, I tend to use uh, git grab with uh, these options, which just make it uh, a bit prettier and give me a lot of context. <clears throat> so let's uh, use git grab. Uh, our Project is very, very small, so it's 
going to be really, really fast, but it's also fast on very large projects too, because it runs multi-threaded. So it's very, very um, handy to use git grab when you, when you want to uh, find code. Um, let's, it's capital dash P. <coughs> Uh, another padding. Um, what do we want to search? Search for. Um, let's maybe let's take a see how often we have standard C out. Um, this is how um, I'm usually us usually um, using um, Git grep because it's it's going to highlight um, the search term that I've looked for, and it's also telling me um, Git has. Uh, the possibility to um, add some meaning to what uh, to the code that you um, that you have version controlled. So Git kind of knows that we are t now looking at CPP code, and Git knows how the context of a C++ function looks like. So with the um, function context and heading option, it actually gives me the complete uh, function where I've called SDC out and apparently some other junk that shouldn't belong there. So it's not perfect, but it's working. So if you want to uh, go through very, very large um, projects, Git grep is a very useful way. Maybe your IDE uh, has to offer the same, the very same thing, but could be that Git, could be that it's actually using Git grep, but it could be that Git grep is uh, faster. <clears throat> um, okay, so, um, maybe you have looked for some uh, specific parts in your code and you're actually not allowed to use standard C out and you have to use some, some other functionality for printing out. And now you want to know um, who and when introdu uh, who introduced uh, the, st the usage of standard C out and that uh, particular line of code and in which comment uh, commit so that you can tell that person, okay, hey, in the future, please do not use a standard C out. Uh, you have introduced it in this and that commit. Um, for that, you can use git blame. So you can blame that person and pass it uh, the file name so that you want to take, um, that you want to analyze. And git blame is going to give you, uh, it's just suffix, uh, prefixing, um, your whole source code um, with some useful information. So it's giving me the commit hash where that particular line has been uh, altered uh, the very last time, and it's telling me by whom and when. So we know now that standard C out has been introduced by myself. Um, if you want to sort of get to know how the lines of code have evolved or um, you simply want to restrict um, git log to a certain as to a certain uh, range of lines of code which you want to inspect you can give it a dash l option so we have um, we have changed the return code uh, of our main routine quite often so let's take a look at uh, what lines are actually affected by that. That's 15 to 18. So let's call git log with the dash L option and use it um, <coughs> like it's on, uh, uh, on the slide. So from line 15 and separated by a comma, we give it the end line and then we enter the file name that we want to run it on. And now you can see Git, this git log is, uh, is just showing me all of the commits where we have introduced changes um, to our return code. But another thing that we, um, that we can see here is in one commit, we have actually deleted our file and apparently the git log has stopped there. Uh, another useful thing uh, is maybe you want to know uh, or maybe you want to filter all commits that have been introduced by a certain author. Um, 
then you can give git log the dash dash offer option. Um, and there are some other, um, some other handy flags for the git log um, subcommand. And I highly encourage you to just take a look at the man page. Maybe there's something for you as well. Or maybe something that helps you in your workflow. Okay, um, so we have now looked through um, the code in order to find specific lines. We have now, we have also um, traced down the evolution of certain lines of code. And we have also, uh, we are now also able to um, blame persons uh, uh, line by line. So we know now, we are now also able to identify who made the last changes on a line of code. But maybe uh, we want to do something which is a bit more involved, namely tracing down a commit which has introduced a bug. And for that, we can use git bisect. Um, so git bisect um, performs a binary search through your commits. Uh, by that, so it's facilitating uh, what we call a binary search in order to find a bad commit. Uh, and in order to do so, you are uh, first and uh, foremost, ne uh, you, <clears throat> you need to start te uh, by telling Git that it should start a bisect. And then you are going to tell Git uh, one of uh, the good commands, uh, good commits. So uh, uh, a version in your history where you know that everything worked well. And one commit where you know, okay, something bad happened there. Uh, so we have uh, somewhere in between that good commit and that bad commit, we have introduced the bug. Um, it will then automatically, um, recursively put your uh, head into the middle of these two commits. So there are going to be uh, a certain number of commits between that bad and the good one. And Git will simply move your commit to the middle one um, between these two commits. And then you need to inspect the code, maybe run a test script or by any means find out whether the bug is still there or not. And then you tell Git, okay, uh, this is a good one or this is a bad one. And then it's going to do, it's uh, once again, going to recursively um, move your head into the middle of the two new bad and good commits until you have found um, the commit that has introduced uh, the bug. Uh, so uh, let's take a look whether we can come up with um, some, something interesting about our code. So we don't really have any bugs in there, um, but maybe we can use the, the return value of our main routine in dummy.cpp. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to tell git to start the bisect and I'm going to give it the first commit as a good one so that we can actually see some stuff happening. Um, git bisect, good. And the bad one is our current one. <clears throat> so Git has moved my head now. And maybe let's, let's find the commit where we have changed uh, the return code from zero to one. Let's take a look for that. Um, so we are uh, directly inspecting our code now because we can directly tell whether our return code is zero or one. So it's still one. So we can tell git bisect that this is a bad commit. Okay, so four revisions left, um, roughly about two steps. Um, let's take a look at cat. Oh, this is the one where I have deleted it. Okay, so our return code is not zero. Let's treat this as a bad commit. Uh, changed main exit code to error code, so that sounds promising. Let's take a look at dummy.cpp. <clears throat> uh, it's return one. Um, 
but let's actually take a look at the changes that we have introduced. So you can see here that particular commit changed the return code from zero to one. So this is a very, very, very small example for the usage of git bisect. And we did it in about how many steps? I think three steps. Um, but in a large project where many, many people are committing, it could be way more involved um, because you're not only going to need to look at one line of code, but actually maybe you run the code and so on and so forth. Um, but the binary search through these commits is a very efficient way to, to find your bug. Okay, um, now we've gone through all of the analysis stuff that I wanted to show you and before um, I close up the whole uh, lecture, we're going to take a look at uh, how, Gook, how hooks uh, can help us to, uh, with automating our, our workflow. Um, so hooks um, are, uh, are scripts. They uh, live in the .git slash hooks folder, and they have to have a certain name, which Git knows about. Um, mostly there are having a pre prefix or a post prefix, and then a certain uh, git sub command. So for example, commit, um, which means that there is, for example, a pre commit hook. And the name of the hook is already telling you what it's doing. So a pre commit hook is going to get executed whenever you are about to commit a pre push hook is going to be executed whenever you are about to push something to a server. <laughs> so we're going to, to, to take a look at um, some uh, uh, workflows, so best practice workflows uh, in, our, in, in our last slides. And it could be, um, for example, very helpful if you have a master branch and a development branch and a testing branch, for example, and your policy within your team is to have the main branch always uh, be in a good shape. So no testing or developing on your main branch. Your development branch is sort of the stage before the main branch. So this is where everything is um, uh, is going to get uh, is going to go through final uh, uh, tests and so on and so forth, final reviews. And the test branch is where your team is working on. So this is where you actively um, merge uh, your feature branches into, and this is where you are testing. So this means that you should never ever directly push to a master or development branch if you're doing that um, particular um, workflow in your team. Um, and you can use a pre-push hook in that case in order to check whether uh, the branch that you are currently trying to push goes to the master or development branch on that, um, on that remote repository. And then uh, return an error, error so that you uh, don't actually push it. But it should, or the script, the hook, should then tell you, you are not allowed to push to main or development, push to a different branch. Um, I've prepared uh, something a bit uh, smaller. Uh, I have prepared a post checkout hook for us. But before we are actually going to uh, continue working on that, we are going to reset our bisect so that we are uh, back to our uh, main branch again. So we've git bisect reset, sorry, I forgot that. Um, with git bisect reset, you are basically canceling um, your analysis, your tracing, and you move back to where you have started the Git bisect. So let's go into the Git hooks directory and take a look at the post checkout. Um, that actually does not get created when you Git initialize. Um, we can take a look at some of the others. Um, push for example they are way more involved um, <coughs> let's take a look at what this is actually doing this sample shows how to prevent push of commits where the log message starts with work in progress so um, this thing is 
preventing work in progress things to be pushed. But we are going to take a look at um, what my little script is doing. Um, so I'm not going to go into uh, the, uh, into the details of um, shell scripting, but a shell script is going to take um, a certain uh, amount of parameters. And what these parameters are, are specified within the context of Git. So let me open up my browser. And I'm on the Git um, SCM page. So this is where all of the documentation, documentation for Git is. And I am at the documentation for hooks. And we are going to take a look for our post checkout. So here's a description of the post checkout hook. Um, and the documentation tells us that this hook is invoked when a git checkout, checkout or git switch is run after having updated the work tree. And it's given three parameters, the reference of the previous head, the reference of the new head, and the flag indicating whether the checkout was a branch checkout. Okay, perfectly fine. But what we're interested in, interested in is that it's going to give us the reference of the new head. So basically where we are switching to. And we're going to use that. Um, so the documentation said that the second um, parameter given to the script is the reference of the new head. So with the dollar two here, I am refer um, I'm picking the second parameter um, that the script is receiving. And then I'm just going to um, echo last changes made on this branch. And then I'm going to go and git show. And we're passing in the reference of our new branch. So we're taking a look at what changes the last commit on that branch has introduced. And then we're piping that into cat so that just so that um, my pager is not opened and I get the um, changes directly in my terminal. So let's um, write and quit. And in order to make any of these um, hooks actually working, you need to change mod plus x for uh, that script. I have already done that. That's why it's green in my terminal here. And then you need to rename it. So we are going to rename it from post checkout sample to simply post checkout. So we now have that um, script here, which is called post checkout. And Git is now going to always call that script whenever we switch or check out. So let's move back and git switch to our new feature branch. And now as intended, my script um, is being run and Git tells me, or Git gives me the printout that it always does. It tells me switch to branch new feature. And now it also tells me last changes made, made on this branch. And this is ex the exact same thing that a Git show would do. So Git show head gives me the commit, the commit message, and all of the changes that I've introduced. Um, so this is just um, a very basic example of what you could use a hook for. Um, but as you can uh, look into these, these samples um, that Git already provides you, um, these things can get very, very, very involved. But I think they're really, really handy um, <clears throat> in order in, for, for automating your, your workflow. Because I think like that very uh, neat little feature that we have here always puts me to where my branch, where I've left uh, off with working. Okay, so this was uh, the last feature that I wanted to show you. And I uh, want to wrap up with taking a quick look into git config, uh, especially what my git config looks like. And you can also take a look at how you uh, change things. Um, so your git configuration file will be in your home, if you're using Linux, it's going to be in your home directory and it's going to call 
to be called dot git config and this is your global configuration file so if you git config uh, with the dash dash global option git will always just simply add the changes that you have introduced with the command in that global git config here if you are calling git config with the dash dash local option which some of you might have already done because i think it's in most of the of the step by step tutorials that you uh that you go through um when you're using gitlab at the at the TO Guards. um if you use it with the dash dash local option it's just going to add these changes to the dot git slash config file within your local repository uh, and there are actually lots and lots of things that you can change in there and we can take a quick look into mine um, but it basically um, gives you the, 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 the possibility to um, add aliases so that you don't always have to type in git status for example you can abbreviate this to a git st for example or if you want to commit you don't have to write out git commit all the time but you can just simply use git c for example uh, and so on and so on um, all of the colors that you have seen while uh, while i was showing you um, git in my terminal i have uh, set this also via my global config and then you can change um, behaviors we have seen this in action yesterday um, uh, when i was uh, changing the conflict style um, of merges so i have changed the conflict style in my global on a local level to the merge option which just gave me the changes that the conflicting branches have introduced which i didn't really want but git has another option the diff free option that i have globally set which is showing me the changes that the both both of the branches have introduced but also um, where they have um, diverged from so their common ancestor <coughs> sorry uh, or already um, said oh there's uh, an old thing in here so unstage oops um, unstage would be a, a nice handy alias that we could have used but git has already introduced restore uh, which kind of makes that obsolete um, but one example here would be that you can set an alias st for status for example um, or under um, certain categories you can also uh, alternate um, the behavior of git for example you can under the merge uh, section you can set the ff option to only and that would mean that git would only ever do fast forward merges so you would never ever um, consider um, doing a, a true merge if you set that option so let's take a quick look into my messy git config oops uh -huh. okay um, <clears throat> so example i have lots and lots of aliases here um, I usually don't write out git status and I don't even want to have that lengthy um, status um, with all of the additional information about how, uh, how to unstage and so on and so forth. So I have aliased st to um, status with the dash dash short option. Um, I don't want to write git diff all of the time so um, I have aliased d to, to diff. Saving those three uh, keystrokes is very very useful if you're doing it over and over again <clears throat> and as you can see here too i'm currently um, trying out different um, versions of the log so you can just um, specify different aliases for different logs where you change the um, uh, the format option for git log until you have something that you really really fancy and that you like <clears throat> then we have um, different uh, sections for coloring um, for example i wanted to um, always um, match 
my status colors with the things that I have on the slide so that it gets a bit more intuitive. So you can change, um, edit, change, and untrack to whatever um, style you like. You can, I don't know, use a traffic light system analogy here, for example. And some other things um, would be merge. I have actually set the merge tool, which is WimDiv, but I don't use it, as I said yesterday. And the merge has the conflict style option set here to div3. So you can directly modify that git config file here, which I'm usually doing, but you can also use git config with the dash dash global uh, option or the dash dash local option. Okay. Um, so that basically brings me to an end. I just, uh, uh, it brings me to the end uh, of all the Git related topics or the Git only related topics. And there's just some, um, there are just some few things um, with respect to workflows that I want to mention um, before we uh, close the lecture. Um, so Git offers um, lots and lots of um, different ways to manage your code. Um, there's no specific way how you need to, um, how, how you are committing. So it's just um, basically an interface to all of the um, things that we have seen uh, the day before yesterday and yesterday. So moving the different references, moving files between the uh, different stages and so on and so forth. But how you specifically use them is, is up to you. So do you just um, use short git commit messages or do you really describe what, or what the commit is introducing? Um, do, you use, do you reuse branches or do you um, tend to open branches and throw them away after you have merged them? None of that is really um, written down anywhere. It's nowhere carved in stone. So. Um, you really have to inter come up with your own workflow or um, comply to the workflow that your team is setting. Um, <clears throat> the difference between merging and rebasing is one of these um, conflicts. So there's uh, not really a war, but there are certain conflicts online uh, about the advantages and disadvantages, respectively, about using merges or merges with the uh, with rebasing like we have seen it um, or rebasing only. Um, and these workflows should really be discussed at, at the start when you are working with a team. You should um, tell them, OK, we are going to use GitLab, for example, for this and that project, um, for this and that lecture. Um, I don't want any of us to be able to change the main branch, for example. So please all introduce that hook so that you don't actually accidentally push to main, but let's all work with feature branches. And whenever um, one of you is done with his or her work, we are then going to use, um, in, in the context of GitLab, they are called merge requests. We're going to open up a merge request where we can discuss or you have another pair of eyes look over the changes that you have introduced and some other member of your team uh, um, is then has then reviewed your changes <clears throat> so that um, you don't accidentally introduce bugs or whatever um, <clears throat> i've already uh, mentioned uh, one possible way to do that with having a master branch or a main branch and a development branch and one branch where you are actively working on. Okay, so um, at the very end, I'm going to quickly show you how that is, how that looks like in uh, in GitHub. So this is just um, this is a, a, a random open repository that I picked. Um, Mud Wizard is, is a, um, a setup client for an email uh, program, and it's an open source um, project. So the maintainer or the owner is uh, Luke Smith, and people usually um, find bugs in, in his script. And whenever they find a bug, they open, uh, uh, they open 
uh, upper branch. <clears throat> and they then push that branch um, to that repository. There's actually another thing happening in between, which we did not cover because it's GitHub related. But you can think of it, think of it as they having their own branch that they're working on. And they're then pushing that branch to, to the repository. And they ask um, Luke Smith, in that case, for example, for a pull request. So they request him to pull all these changes, take a look at them. And if he thinks that they are fine, they can um, merge the, those changes into main. So let's take, take a look at um, something that has been merged. Um, fix macro for sync all accounts. Let's take a look at that. So user called smart ding um, has found that there is an issue with one of the commands that they are using. He or she is describing what the issue was and what a proposed fix would look like. And the maintainer or the owner of the project can then just go into um, the files changed tab here and they could then just uh, take, a, take a look at what the changes that have been introduced look like. And if they're fine with that, they can merge that into the main branch. Okay. That brings me um, to the end of, our, uh, of, of the lecture, the end of our um, three streams. Um, uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. Um, if you still have some questions or if you have some issues with um, working with Git, um, feel free to write me an email. Um, I'm going to put my email into the, scri the description. And after I'm finished and I've taken a look over all of my slides, I'm going to upload them into the URL, which I'm also going to uh, link in the description so that you can um, go through the slides again. Thanks once again, and 